the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Ave Maria. Welcome to this Church of the English Martyrs. You know, Our Lady, when she was crowned Queen of Heaven and Earth, the glory of the saints, she became the Queen of the Martyrs as well. She was crowned Queen of Martyrs. Just before Mass, we sang the Litany of Our Lady of Loreto, and we hear Queen of Prophets, Queen of Patriarchs, Queen of Apostles, Queen of Martyrs. And we acclaim her as Queen of Martyrs, and we've crowned her here in this church, dedicated to the English Martyrs. And so let's investigate this title of hers. Let's uh, penetrate deeper into its meaning so that when we come to pray that prayer and when we come into this church, we can understand more clearly Our Lady as the Queen of the Martyrs. When we read about heaven, we often read about the various groupings of saints. Um, there's a very ancient hymn that we sing, the Te Deum, where um, we sing, God is acclaimed, the glorious band of apostles praise you, the noble prophets praise you, you are praised by the white-robed army of martyrs. And often, actually, in the art of the church, you can see, um, you know, if someone's painted heaven, they paint the Lord Jesus crowning Our Lady and the various groups of saints around her. You have the Franciscans, the Dominican saints. You have um, those who are martyrs, those who are um, apostles, all grouped together, all grouped together. So what is a martyr? Who are these people who will meet in heaven and will recognize? Who are they? We know the names of the martyrs. We know that wherever the church is, there are martyrs. We know this. There is nowhere where the church is or has been that is without the blood of the martyrs. From the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit, what happened? Peter began to preach. The apostles began to preach. And we know, because we read in the Acts of the Apostles, that Peter and John were taken and flogged. And that was a persecution that culminated, that reached its high point, the very beginning of the church in the death of St. Stephen, the first martyr. St. Peter and St. John were taken and flogged. The crowds left their coats with, Saint, with, with Paul, with Saul before his conversion, and they killed, they shed the blood of the first martyr, St. Stephen, and since then, the blood of the martyrs has flowed. We know from the ancient martyrs of Rome, from the beginning of the church, even to now, the church is suffering, and even now martyrs are being made for Christ. Martyrs are offering their lives for Christ even now. And we can see the blood of the martyrs almost like a cross stretched across the world and into the past of the world, the history of the world, and into the present and even into the future. From the East, we know about the holy martyrs of Korea, of Vietnam, of Japan, all of the way across the globe to the West. We know even about the martyrs of the American wilderness who were put to death by the um, Native Americans. Wherever the church is, there have been martyrs. Now, a martyr is someone we have this idea a martyr is someone who suffers for their faith. A martyr is someone who suffered for the Catholic faith. The Catholic faith. And we hear so many stories of martyrdom. The Book of the Saints takes its name from the martyrs, the martyrology. We take the name of the Book of Saints from the martyrology. These were the first saints. We hear about the martyrs who were taken immediately and killed. And we hear about others whose sufferings are long and drawn out. And each act of violence, as each act of violence occurs, they choose the Lord and they love the Lord above their material possessions and their material bodies. An example, one of our English martyrs, St. Thomas More, who we have a statue of in our church, St. Thomas More, he had been the greatest man in England, really second only to the king. He was chancellor of the whole, the whole realm. 
He was esteemed. He was known for his virtue, for his piety, for his cleverness, for his intelligence, for his justice. And because, but because of his Catholic faith, because he recognized that the Pope is the visible head of the church, not the king, not anyone else, the Pope is the visible head of the church, because of his Catholic faith, this great man saw his wealth destroyed, his position destroyed, his good name destroyed, his lands and wealth taken from him. He even saw members of his family desert him. As each material benefit was removed from him, he made a more and more devout choice for Jesus and for his church. My soul and the salvation of my soul is worth more than this. And each thing was taken from him until eventually he lost his body. This is the same is true of all the martyrs who suffered ter terrible torments. My soul and the salvation of my soul is worth more than this. And we hear from the um, early church, but actually um, it's a recurring theme in martyrdom that, that the tortures of the martyrs can be, can be awful. As each thing is removed from a body, as each agony begins and ends, my soul and the salvation of my soul is worth more than this suffering. This is the martyr's faith. So that in that most sacred moment of execution, when the body and the soul are finally separated, and the body dies, and the soul goes to its judgment, and the soul in heaven was found worthy of the martyr's crown and the palm of victory, the symbols of the martyrs, the martyr's crown and the palm of victory, the suffering is worth it for the salvation of the soul. This is what a martyrdom is. This is what a martyr is. My soul and my soul's salvation is worth more than this. And this is why we hold the martyrs in such love and such esteem. And we look into the lives of the martyrs. We look into their lives, the story of um, their being Catholic and then suffering for the faith and then suffering grievously for the faith until death. When we look into their lives, we see that even before their death, even before their sufferings, they had taken Mary as their queen and as their mother. Who was one of the first people to suffer for the faith? St. John. And what had John received at the foot of the cross? Our Lady Mary as his mother. St. Stephen will probably have known Our Lady, have seen her, have spoken to her this first proto-martyr, this first martyr for the faith. When we think of the English martyrs and the devotion and the love with which Our Lady was esteemed in this country and with the love and, and devotion with which she was esteemed by the martyrs themselves, in her dowry, her as the Queen of England. Now think of this, uh, Margaret Clitheroe, who was killed for teaching the Catholic faith, Yes, she was teaching about the sacraments. She was teaching about the Mass. She was providing Mass in her home. The priest would come to her home. What was she teaching the children? The Hail Mary, the Rosary, teaching them that our Blessed Lady is Queen of Heaven and Earth. And for this, she was killed. In the accounts of the many martyrdoms, we read of the martyrs suffering on the scaffold in England, but across the world also, in many other places, repeating the names of Mary and Jesus, calling on them, consecrating their death to them. We read of the martyrs praying at that very moment of death, the Our Father and the Hail Mary. There was a group of nuns at the time of the French Revolution, the Carmelite martyrs, who intoned as they ascended the scaffold, the, um, the accounts of their martyrdom said that as they ascended the scaffold, they sang the Salve Regina, the Hail Holy Queen. 
commending themselves, consecrating themselves at this very end of their life to Mary, who is their queen, who is the queen of martyrs. In life and in death, they took her as their queen. And when they found themselves in heaven, crowned as martyrs with the palm of victory, she was their queen too. Ave Regina Martyrum, Hail Queen of Martyrs. But there is one more union of the martyrs with their queen, one more union, and it's a very deep union. The martyrs, by dying for their faith, by dying for Jesus, are with him on the cross. We say in the prayer of martyrs, the preface of martyrs, their blood poured out like Christ's to sanctify the name of the Father. That's what we pray in the prayer of the church. The blood of the martyrs pouring out is united with the blood of Jesus. Their cross, or a cross, or a scaffold, or a block on which they lost their head, or um, some other implement of torture, their cross is united with the cross of the Lord. And who was there? The cross of the Lord first. Who was united to the cross of the Lord Jesus? Who? Our Blessed Lady. Our Lady was at the foot of the cross, wrapped in the cross. She was united with Jesus on the cross, so united that we understand in the church that she suffered death with him. What the Lord suffered externally and internally, she received in her heart. According to the prophecy, a sword will pierce your own heart also. And there, at the foot of the cross, she led the martyrs. There, at the foot of the cross, she welcomed the martyrs. There, at the foot of the cross, she suffered with the martyrs. And this is why the queenship of Mary over the martyrs isn't a queenship of devotion. It's a queenship of rights. She is rightfully their queen because she led them there. She was there at the cross of Jesus, suffering with Jesus first. And us, what about us? We suffer in our own way, but we haven't yet been asked to suffer until death, but that might happen, you never know. It might happen more quickly than we think. First, we who live in the world, we who suffer our daily crosses, our day-by-day -day crosses, we must first accept our Blessed Lady as our mother and as our queen. We have to accept her as our mother and our, as our queen now, today, at this moment. But particularly in our sufferings, when we recognize the cross in our lives and we unite that cross with the cross of Jesus, we can recognize also our Blessed Lady. When we recognize that we as Christians suffer with Jesus on the cross, then we recognize as Christians, our Blessed Lady is there, our Mother and our Queen. This is the first thing, and the second is like it. We belong to the Church, and where the Church is, there is the blood of the martyrs. And so remember to pray to Our Lady with the martyrs. Remember, as you devoutly say the names of Jesus and the name of Mary, these names were spoken by the martyrs at the hour of their death. Remember, as you pray the Our Father and the Hail Mary, which we pray every day, these prayers were recited as a final act of faith by those who died for the faith. Unite your prayers to theirs. and Recognize we are one church with them, one body with them. When we say the Hail Holy Queen, or sing it, the Salve Regina, we can unite our voices with the voice of those nuns of the revolution, the French Revolution, for whom it was their final and ultimate act of consecration to their queen. The more we accept Our Lady in this life, the more we'll accept her at our death, and the more we'll accept her as our queen and our mother in the glory of heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Ave Maria. Amen.